In Fortnite, there are many ways to succeed, but when playing at a competitive level, these different paths to the victory royale quickly fade out. You'll find yourself gravitating towards only a couple of different mechanics and almost always playing around your box. That's why today, we are going to be taking a deep dive into Box Fighting 101. What's good everybody, I'm your host Dan, and today should be a pretty fun episode. You guys have asked for it, and here I am to deliver. If you guys appreciate that, then feel free to hit that like button. Speaking of getting good at box fights, this meta is all about box fights. So if you want to learn how to get good at those, head over to ProGuides.com, where we have courses that cover every aspect of Fortnite. And for today, we have our annual Cyber Monday sale, where subscriptions are 33% off. The offer ends tonight at 11.59 PST, so hurry up. You can even have your own coach walk you through the drills and practice routines. So be sure to visit us for everything you need to know about Fortnite. All right, let's hop into the video. So to really master box fighting, we need to address what I would call box fighting theory. Just like any other concepts, Fortnite has inherent strategies that are more beneficial to your games than others. Like if you're solving a math problem, for instance, sure, there are multiple ways to solve it and get the correct answer. But there is just one way that is the fastest. If there was more than one way, then, well, it wouldn't be the fastest. Now, this box fighting theory really comes down to when to be aggressive and when to play passive. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself wanting to push someone or run away from an altercation when the actual ideal play was to do the exact opposite. With that said, let's talk about box fighting from the low ground. The first mistake I see many newer players make is that they always want to overextend, especially when in a suboptimal position. Like, for some reason, people have this obsession with always going for high ground. No patience, nothing. But the thing is, people on high ground prey on those who try to retake high ground. Because the easiest time to take shots at someone is when they're trying to retake high ground. You're the most exposed, obviously, and one big shot will send you back to the lobby. Instead, I recommend that you take it slow and try to bait your opponent down. Congrats, you just entered the ring of mind games. 4D chess, so to speak. Take a look at Kanata as his opponent relentlessly AR spams him from above. Instead of collapsing under the pressure, Kanata patiently waits and eventually forces the opponent to come down if he wants an engagement. And it works like a charm, guys. One big shoddy shot later and the opponent is flat-footed. One other thing I wanted to point out was that Kanata confirmed the kill by using a trap. Let's rewind the footage so that we can get a good look of what exactly went down. After Kanata got some solid damage off with his first shotgun shot, he knew at that moment that the fight was over. It was just about how to go about killing his opponent without risking his own life. Since the opponent was obviously under 150 HP, we know that a trap would insta-kill them. I believe in either Season 9 or 10, Epic came out with an update that allowed you to place traps, launch pads, and any other placeable traps without actually having a wall or floor placed beforehand. Placing a trap would actually place a wall or floor or whatever alongside the trap itself. This is so, so important because it means that you can now more seamlessly place a trap in a box fight. If you were paying attention to that clip, Kanata was able to execute the trap play in a fraction of a second. After the trap got placed, Kanata effectively boxed in his opponent by placing a wall and the rest was history. Arguably, one of the best creative warriors right now is Zayn SCN, and there's a reason why he always demands traps to be used in his creative fights. If you're mindful about your traps, you're going to use your traps. Traps are free damage and will throw your opponents for a big loop. There's literally no reason not to use it. Another critical mistake that I see a lot of inexperienced players make is that they don't pace the fight correctly. Like, when they decide to be aggressive, it's a brain-dead W key. But when they decide to be passive, it seems like they never want to make the move, which will in turn never lead to a clean kill. The absolute correct answer to fight pacing is actually quite situational. But like all other things, a healthy blend of passiveness and aggressiveness is going to be the optimal route. If we go back to Kanata, he actually displays the spacing ability with flying colors. When Kanata gets hit for a big shot, he's able to almost instantly separate himself using multiple layers and pop heals. This shows me personally that he has mastered understanding of adequate separation. And think about it, when trying to heal, you need to have a mindset that prioritizes giving yourself multiple seconds to pop whatever healing item before your opponent can swoop in. 
So although what Kanata does is very subtle, I think it's worth pointing out that it has a huge impact on the pace. Now, say the opponent in this scenario wanted to W key Kanata because he was obviously at an HP disadvantage. I almost guarantee you that would not have worked out in his favor. Since we had that aforementioned separation, Kanata would have still gotten the heals off before relentless push would have done anything. It might have been a solid idea in theory, but in reality, could have just as easily blown up in his face. One quick edit from Kanata, and that fight may have changed tides in a matter of seconds. After listening to this, you guys should not be surprised when you see your favorite pro players win almost every engagement in pubs, arena, or tournament play. These are things that they have already mastered. Needless to say, box fighting is a nuanced game, because even though in Kanata's example, relentless aggression may not have been the way to go, but if the HP disadvantage was any bigger, a hard push could have been optimal. Let's take a look at Mongrel, someone that I consider to be a top tier box fighter. He's playing around the box almost 100% of the time, which makes him a more than credible source to say the least. So Mongrel gets some huge shots on his opponent early on in the fight. I won't say that I'm great at math, but I know that means the opponent is very weak compared to Mongrel's 200 HP. Before we go any further, can we just appreciate the fact that Mongrel just pulled off a 200 IQ bush jeb 8? Like that's crazy, and he's doing that on the daily. Anyways, with all the damage he did, his opponent is sub 100 HP, and since both have tack shotguns, nobody is getting one shot today, except for the opponent. So when you're in a situation like this, the ends really justify the means, then I say just go for the kill. And that's exactly what Mongrel does. He goes for the side wall, which usually is not an ideal strategy, but not in this case. The goal here is ultimately to make your opponent make an edit on you before he can get any heals. Remember, trading out is winning when you have an HP advantage so big like this. Since Mongrel is so good at taking walls, he instinctively goes for the wall replace without any bait placed. If you guys aren't as confident in yourself to be able to take a wall first or second try, then I would suggest cycling between your pickaxe and your shotgun when doing this. Try to bait your opponent out to get a free shot on you and return the favor. One last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the element of surprise. Sometimes all it takes is being a little sneaky to get exactly what you want. You don't always have to brute force yourself into a situation in order to get kills. The opposite, actually. You only sometimes want to take brute force situations, but always want to take a fight if you have the element of surprise. While we're on Mongrel, might as well show another situation where he uses the element of surprise to his advantage. And upon it was based up slightly above him in a solo cash cup, and that was his first mistake. Never base up around Mongrel, I heard it's bad for your health. Anyways, Mongrel instantly realizes that one of his sidewalls is one pickaxe away from breaking. But I think Mongrel's a little too passive to actually go for the kill. <laughs> nope. You know he's in there like swimwear with one of the easiest kills of his life. The moral of the story here is that sometimes there is in fact a free lunch. You just have to look out for it. In this case, a weak wall combined with an unsuspecting opponent was the opportunity that Mongrel needed to secure the extra elimination. All right, let's do a quick overview to touch up on everything we went over today. First off, understanding the basics behind box fighting theory is very important. The blend of aggression and passiveness is what will lead to getting the kills more consistently. If you find yourself on the low ground, never feel as though you have to go for the high ground. The opposite, in fact, bait your opponents down for an optimal engagement. And if you are able to successfully bait your opponent down, make sure to use traps if applicable. Just don't try placing a trap if you don't have one. I've done that so many times. If you find yourself with a huge HP or positional advantage that naturally leads to you winning more times than not, don't be afraid to force the engagement right then and there. Don't forget to stay smart and not get popped for a lot of damage. Holding angles and such will keep you safe. Finally, surprise your enemies when they least expect it. Whether they're not paying attention to you or simply getting sprayed at from another angle, another man's misfortune should be your advantage to exploit. All right, guys, it's been fun, but unfortunately, that's going to be it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed this video and that this one helped you out. Also, don't forget to use code PROGUIDES when making any purchases in the Fortnite shop to support your ProGuides team. And comment down below if these tips helped you and what you'd like to see next. We aim to bring you guys the highest quality Fortnite content around, so do us a favor by dropping a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel. Finally, show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Once again, I'm your host, Dan. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Lammerman, and we'll see you guys next time. Time.